Hi, in this video, I will be showing you how to create a Android application using Android Studio. So first off, if you don't have Android Studio, you want to just Google Android Studio, then go to the download. Go ahead and just download that for whatever, if it's PC or Mac. And then you may need Java. If you need that, just Google Java and then uh, download. And then version 8 is the latest, so just go ahead and download that. And also, on, for all the code in this video, I have all the files right here in my GitHub repository. Uh, I will have a link below with that. So once you have everything installed, go ahead and uh, launch your Android Studio. And then we'll start a new Android project here. And we will call this project Magic 8-Ball. And then hit Next. And then we'll just go with 5.0, that's fine. Hit Next again. And we'll go, we'll go over all these in other videos, but for now this is a simple app. So we'll just click empty and then main activity is fine. Okay, once everything's loaded up, uh, just click on the app and then go to, might as well go to Java and open up Java and then hit this first one. Then it'll bring up the main activity. It's usually already brought up at the start, but I like to keep that open. And then we'll go to resources right here and then open up layout. This is basically what your app will look like. It's just a visualization of your app. So it has a GUI page here. You can just drag and drop items on here, like buttons and all that. Personally, I like to do stuff in the text edit. It's actually a lot easier than dragging and dropping for me, at least. But for this app, since it's kind of simple, we'll just keep it. Since we're only going to have uh, two text views and an image view that we'll use the image as uh, an actual button. So we'll keep the same text view that they have. But we'll go up here and change this. Just start typing linear layout. And then if it completes it for you, just hit enter. And it'll switch everything over. Then you can go ahead and delete this. For this app, we'll just go linear. Just because it's going to be you know, three items lined right on top of each other. So first off, we will go over here for the layout. And then we'll type in, just start typing orientation. And then it finishes it for you. Android 2 is pretty good. It, it knows what you're about ready to type. So... And then it gives you two options, horizontal and vertical. We want vertical for this because we want to line up everything uh, straight up and down. So just tap vertical. So here, this will basically be just like a header. It'll say something. We'll just say uh, ask the magic uh, eight ball. And if you hit the preview over here, you can see what it has right here. That's what your app will look like. We'll make it a little bit neater than that. We'll... Uh, so here, just type in gravity. This will center up the text through to the middle of the screen. So we'll go layout gravity there. And then just tap hit center. And then we don't want it all the way up to the top. So we will uh, just type start typing margin. And then look for top, margin top right here. So right there, you have to give it a, a number basically. So we'll go 24 dp. And then... We also want the text size to be a little bit larger since it's the title, basically. So just start typing in text size. And you can do all this stuff in the design part, but for this app, we'll just keep it simple and do it over here since we only have three items and it, it's pretty easy to do it like this. So text size will go 24. Now 24, you don't go DP, you go SP. So right there you go. Okay, let's change the color a little bit, make it a little bit darker. So you just go text color. We'll just make it a pure black color. So we'll go hashtag all zeros after that, six zeros. We can actually mess around with it and make it the text style, which would be like italic or bold. We can make, you can even make both of them. So we'll go to a text style right here. And then if you want italic, you go like that. Now, if you want multiple things from the same category, you just hit that line and then you can just type in bold. So it'll make it italic and bold. So so that we're all finished with. And now we'll create we'll create a button, but we'll use an image. And I got an image on the GitHub page. You just go ahead and download or go to the GitHub website and uh, in the link below in the description below. Let's go ahead and download this real quick. Save image and just go eight ball. And then just go ahead and drag that on your desktop. And then once you have that on your desktop. You can go ahead and, uh, the, okay, with this, you can't have a number at the beginning of your image or any kind of like image resource or an audio file or something. 
So we'll just call it uh, we'll just call it ball since that's like the only only item we'll have in our drawable file that we're importing. So basically, if you drag and drop, it don't work. So you ba you just copy it and then you paste it in there. And then all you have to do is just hit okay and then you can have a chance to rename it if you if you didn't rename it on the desktop and just hit okay again. So it's right there. So we're going to use the image as the button instead of just having a button there. So instead of, if you wanted a button, you just would go uh, button. But since we don't want a button, we will just go image. It'd be an image view. I guess you could do image button, but we'll just do image view for this. And then for the, for the width, you'd want wrap content. And then for the height, you would want wrap content. And then just kind of clean this up a little bit. So first off, we will want to give it an ID. The first text view, we didn't have to, just cause we're not really messing with that with the code, but we're gonna have to link this with uh, the ID through the, the main Java activity. So just hit ID and then make sure it's uh, at sign plus ID backslash and then just name it whatever. We'll just name it uh, BTN. So here again, we'll go gravity, we'll layout gravity, then we'll go center. And then we will want another margin because we don't want it right on top of things. Let's see what it looks like over here. I guess we haven't imported the uh, source yet. So we'll do that right now real quick. So we go app and colon uh, source. Actually, you know what? Is an easier way of doing that. You just go to design. And then you just tap right here on that, on the uh, button. And then go to source right here. And then just right there, here's, there's some sources or some images supplied by Android Studio that kind of go along with what Android wants your, they want developers to make their apps look like. So right there it is. So we'll go back to text view and it should be right there. See, yep, right there's the source. So we'll go and just move it down a little bit, just give it a little bit of margin. So we'll go here again, margin top, and then we'll go 48. DP and good practice would be to make everything kind of increments of four of uh, make everything divisible by four when you uh, place items in uh, the layout. I believe that's all we need for that. Now we need a text view that holds the answers that our magic eight ball will be giving us. So here we'll go text view. Actually, we can just copy. This is what's good by doing it here because you can just copy and paste a lot and just kind of reuse a lot of items here. So this one won't have anything, so we'll just make it nothing here. We can make it a couple dots, I suppose. So, yep, we want to wrap content, height, width. The only thing we need to do is just give it an ID. So we'll go ID, and then we'll name this uh, answer. I believe that's all we need to do with the layout, so we'll head over to the main activity. So basically how the main activity works, once the app launches, this uncreate is called, and then that pulls up the activity main layout. That is what we just did right here. We could launch it now and this would pop up, but nothing would happen. It would just look exactly like this. But the first thing we need to do is to declare a few variables. We need to get a reference to, we need to get a reference to the image view that we made. Image view, and we'll call this ball IV. I like to do that to kind of distinguish between image views and text views. So it's just a little thing I like to do. So then you go private. We need to get a reference to a text view, just the answer one, not the other one. We didn't give the other one an, uh, an ID. So we'll name this answer TV. And then we also need an array of the answers that our uh, Magic 8 Ball will give the user once they tap it. And an array is basically just a group of items. For this one, we'll use a string array. So we'll go string or private string, and then hit the two brackets, and then we'll go, we'll call this answers array, and then we'll make it equal. And then I already have all these on my, so you don't have to go and I looked them up on the official Magic Eight Ball, whatever it says. Go over here to my GitHub link. Go to answers. Just copy all these, and then go back to this you'll want to create brackets first though curly braces and then go ahead and just copy or paste everything inside those so right there we're good to go on that so we got all of our variables that we'll need now we need to go down here in the uncreate and uh actually get the reference from them from the uh 
from the XML file. So we'll go ball IV equals, then you go find view by ID. And like I said, it finishes a lot. It does a lot of the hard work for you, a lot of the typing. Then go R dot ID dot, and then it pops up everything here. And uh, so you, our, we named ours button, BTN. So that's that's it for that. And then we need to do the same thing for the answer text view. So we go answer t, TV equals find view ID R dot ID dot answers. Where's the answer? So since we've got the reference to both of those, now all we need to do is uh, make it so you can tap on the image and then something happens. So here we'll go, there's a couple different ways of doing it. Personally, I like to do it by coming up here and implements uh, on click listener. And then once this pops up, you can come over here and hit this little red light bulb and then implement method. Or there's another way. We'll, we'll do it this way, but I'm going to show you the other way first. The other way is you can you could do it, get away with it with this app, but other apps that have that are more involved, you don't want to clutter up your uncreate because there, there'll be a lot more things going on with the uncreate. So, but to do it that way, you would go ball IV dot set unclick listener, and then you go new unclick listener and then it would just kind of complete everything so you can just put all your code in here but we'll do it this other way just cause I don't like to do a lot of things in the uncreate like that we'll go okay let's go ball IV dot set unclick listener and then put this now this means this file right here this Java main activity Java file. So if you hit this and then it'll say something's going on. So you can type this and you can cast this alone. It'll just make, it'll just do that, cast that to view on quick click listener. Or if you want to, I always usually do it like this. You can go up there and type like we did, but, or you could just go over here and just hit make this implement the on click listener. And then basically you just hit okay and it'll do the, a lot more of the hard work for you. So but down here we got unclick. So for this, we, we really don't need to, but I'm gonna show you how to do it anyway. You can do a switch statement. So you could just type in switch and then hit V for view dot get ID. So basically how a switch statement works, it does, it has cases. So if your ID is called something, like so ours is case, and then r dot id dot button and then colon and then always type in break right there now it's more it's much more cleaner if you have multiple cases it's just a cleaner way of instead of having like if statements and all that and we'll get to that in different videos but so basically we need to when you tap on the button this figures out which is going to tap. So if you tap on the button and it's uh, the only button we have, the ball image view, we need it to fill the other answer text view with the text from this array up here, just randomly though. So Java has a way of doing that. You just go int, and it's all in one line code. Int uh, rand equals new random. And then just go beside it and hit dot and next int. And then we go, we need to grab however many items are in this array. That's what we need to grab, that number. You could put five and it would just bring out like one, two, three, four, five. But uh, we will need to grab whatever that is. So you can uh, just copy that and then go ahead in there and paste it and put dot length. This ran number is just just a random number from our array. How arrays work, they they don't start one, two, three, four, five. They start zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. They start off at zero. So like if it grabbed zero, it just grabbed this first one right here. So that's just how arrays work. So then we need to basically just type in answer T 
tv.setText, and then we grab random array, or uh, answers array, answers array, and then to pull an item from it, so we could go one, then every time you'd hit our image button, it would just pull up this every time. But we don't, we want it to be just random objects from this every time. So instead of hitting one, we're grabbing this rand int right here. Just type in rand right here. So every time this is triggered, it's just going to pull, a, it's just going to pull a random number from the array. The answers dot array length or dot length makes it so it won't go any higher than however many items are in here. So that is actually it. So our app is complete. And you, if you have a device, you can hook it up. But for this one, we will, I'll show you how to create a uh, virtual device on here. I don't have a phone hooked up at the moment. I, I prefer using a phone, but for this, something simple like this, you'd want to just create one so we'll go to create new virtual device and again you might have to download uh, some items here but we will just go with uh, Nexus 6P we'll say hit next see I don't have P downloaded so I could download it I'm not going to but just try to download like one of the later ones we'll go with uh, just AP 27 and then finish and then uh, let me type in the name so we know exactly what just, put, just created I usually don't use these a lot I usually just I have multiple devices I like to test things on because if you would be trying to test stuff on GPS it won't you know you'll run into problems with trying to test on a virtual device so we'll just double we'll just click just created and hit OK all right here we go it works randomly grabbing just the different items from the array so if we tap on it, Magic 8 Ball says it is decidedly so. The number one position in the array. Click it again, very doubtful. And that is way down here, the very last one. So if if a device, the virtual device in here took a while to boot up, it usually does first time you load it. So, but yeah, if, if you can, Android devices are fairly cheap. I wouldn't go out and buy one right now, but if you if you're starting to get into it and doing many tutorials and just messing around by yourself on it on uh, Android Studio. Yeah, you could probably go buy one for, you can find one on eBay for 50 bucks, cheaper than that probably. Even a bad device is probably better than the virtual devices on here. But so yeah, thanks for uh, watching the video and I will be having more videos coming out weekly. Thanks.